Hey everyone, I'm Cynthia Conte for the Best Women's Boxing Show, period. We are on the road here at Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia. We're in fight week. Mr. Joe Goosen, future Hall of Famer. Congratulations on the International Boxing Hall of Fame. You know, just move just a little further up because my thing. Up. Up. No, boy. Okay. Congratulations. And how does that make you feel? You, your brother, Dan Goosen, you, now you're joining an elite group of people that have been inducted. I, I'm shocked. Um, I really would have never thought that, uh, you know, usually uh, you're long gone by the time they think about putting you in the Hall of Fame. So I'm, I'm happy to be uh, here in the flesh and um, I, I'm excited about it. I Again, it was a complete surprise to me, but I, I'm very happy because uh, my brother Dan was inducted a few years ago. And of course, we were business partners until he passed a number of years back. And um, I miss him dearly, but I thank God that we will be united again, uh, you know, in the Hall of Fame together. I, it was It's kind of unbelievable to think that when we started in 1980, 81, that it would culminate in this, but it did. And I, But we did work for it, so. We worked hard. Dan worked a lot harder than I did. I worked pretty hard, but he worked really hard. Oh, but I, you know, it's just, it's it's a it's a boxing royalty, the family lineage. Um, it continues with your niece, uh, Brittany Goosen. And, you know, just to continue to put these fights on, I know we have to whisper because we got yelled at by Showtime. <laughs> oh, we got yelled at by Showtime. But, Don't worry about it. We'll just go ahead and speak up. Yeah, they, they, you know, and so, uh, first off, why aren't you in your Canadian denim today? Well, now, you know, I Is have... Is that special just for the... Yeah, I mean, well, I'm not going to give away any, you know. But, yeah, listen, I, you know I've, I've, I've got my collection here. <laughs> you, you should really put out a, a, a Joe Goosen line. <laughs> mm -hmm. Put out a Joe Goosen denim yeah, line. I know. I, I've been a... That's been mentioned. I, it's, you know, that takes time, effort, and work that I'm not interested in. You know, I, I, you know, I like what I do, but I know that's been mentioned before, of course, mm -hmm. but I haven't really taken up anybody's offer. Giandra, we're going to start a whole uh, Joe Goose and Denim line. Just my partner, well, my well, co-host. We, we will. You have to understand, this is still <laughs> it's a still elite, a, a elite but right? It's not denim. No, it isn't. But but um, I'll make you. You know what? I'll make you. I will bedazzle one a whole outfit for you. Hmm. I'll bedazzle it like rhinestones and everything. You'd be like a rhinestone I Joan tried, Goosen. I tried that once, but I, I think I'm a little long in the tooth for that now. <laughs> All right, Joe. So this is, you know, we're here for, this is a very important fight. This is a fight that Ryan has been calling out for years. Yep. And little announced to us that it actually happened. Like who knew that the two kids yeah. that really wanted this, they did not marinate this fight. Two kids in their prime who have, who are undefeated. Someone's O has got to go. Mm -hmm. And we're here. We're standing here in yeah. just a couple days. We're going to see who's going to defeat who. Yeah. I hope it's not a draw. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, Joe Goosen, taking Ryan under your tutelage, I remember the first fight you had him. It was still a learning lesson, trying to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. Now that you've had Ryan in, in camp um, for more than one camp, what have you seen different about Ryan now? His involvement in this camp in terms of his input of uh, his input of um, the work he put in mm -hmm. is just incredible. Um, he he built off the last two fights, and I I think he you know he made a statement way back in October November. Um, he said I want to be a monster for this fight in April, and I think he really has built himself into being a monster. And I mean that physically, mentally, spiritually, in every way. He is just consumed with this fight, the training. Um, and now when you say under my tutelage, I, I take just a little bit. I, 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 that takes a little bit of explanation because Ryan is very unique, and I say it on almost every interview I do. He's, and, and this is becoming a cliche that I might say, and people take a little issue with it, I suppose. But I say you really have to collaborate with Ryan mm -hmm. when you when you work with him. You don't train him like some you know uh, pet. He's he's not like that. He he's a thinker. He's a critical thinker. He's 
very high IQ. I mean, literally, a uh, very high IQ. Very instinctive. He knows what he wants. He's very analytical. Um, he uh, breaks down uh, systems, uh, breaks down fights, he breaks down technique, and he'll bring that to the table and he'll go, that sounds like what a coach would present. Uh, so you have to honor that, you have to respect that. He's not going to be led around by the nose. Yeah. Okay? And once you recognize that, it's a lot easier to work with Ryan. And so, um, and again, he doesn't cut any corners. If he was doing this to, like, benefit some, you know, uh, you know, be, you know, so he wouldn't have to work as hard, no, no. What he does and what he, um, like I say, when we collaborate on things, we discuss things, he writes them out, he presents them, he gives you his ideas. Um, oh, he, he, it's like, uh, a, like a PowerPoint presentation. Exactly. He does do that. And so you have to respect that. You have to respect that. I do. I'm not the all-powerful, all-knowing. Mm -hmm. I know a lot. But I'm going to tell you, there are other people uh, in this game that know a lot, too, including fighters. They're the ones in the ring. So they bring their perspective, and I understand their perspective more than your average Joe. <laughs> yes. And and um, and so again, Ryan Garcia is unique in that manner, and um, I I love being in camp with him because he's not only fun. Well, right now he's he's you know in a zone, yeah. and so the the normal Ryan, the off duty Ryan, who's who's loving and fun yeah. and he's just a wonderful human being his mom and dad raised great kids they're terrific lisa and henry and but ryan right now is extremely focused and um he's on a mission and I, you know i'm just so excited about saturday night um, I believe in Ryan Garcia as much as I've ever believed in any fighter and his talents and especially his mind power because that is very meaningful in a fight like this. So I'm, I'm just, like I say, I, I feel very confident, although no, you'd never want to be too overconfident. You have to understand that we're in there with a dynamite fighter. He's a southpaw. That's a difficult, that, that, that makes the difficulty quotient. Uh, rise a little bit, although Ryan does like, he's the rare guy that likes fighting southpaws. I hate, I, I, right, I often said, uh, and I've had uh, several left-handed champions, I love training them, I hate fighting them. Yeah. You know, um, because you have a little built-in advantage when you have a south, but to Ryan, I, see, here's the thing, Ryan grew up sparring as a little kid with his brother who's a left-hander so his first sparring partner for a majority of his early life was a left-hander so he's used to it it's like he's used to it he he understands the dynamic and he knows how to capitalize on it so that's a very um i would say a reassuring thing for me knowing that you know tank is a very clever southpaw but Again, Ryan is the rare, um, he's the rare fighter that actually says, bring me, I, I want to fight southpaws. I go, are you kidding? I, don't do that to me. Because number one, it's hard to get great sparring yeah. too. And then to keep him there because Ryan's rough on his sparring. And, um, but again, uh, Tank is, you know, he's undefeated. Well, I think 28, no, 26 knockouts. Two guys have gone the distance with him. One being Isaac Cruz, and I forget who the other one was. But, uh, hmm? Oh, no, sorry. My mic is just hitting your face. No, it's all right. It's all right. Um, so, anyway, I, the bottom line is I'm, I just, I, look, I, I've got the best seat in the house for this fight, although I won't be looking at it from a fan's perspective. Um, it's, it's, uh, I'll have a lot of, you know, focus and tunnel vision in the corner. Um, yeah. and, uh, I, I hope I don't need to be a big part of the corner because, um, if it goes, you know, our way and you just keep it going our way, 
I know that there's a uh, th- we've heard that we've heard this with fighters that they want to f- do not stop the fight at no cost. Mm-hmm. Have you, Ryan, and the father spoken about that? Because this is Tank Davis is not just any fighter. He is a power puncher that both of them could do damage to each other's body. Uh, have you guys talked about if you don't like if you see something you don't like, you could possibly stop the fight? I'm I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. That has not crossed my mind. Good. It has not crossed my mind in the least because I'm confident in Ryan's abilities. And I just, I, he's hard to hit. It's not going to be easy Very to hit Ryan. Yeah. You know, they go, oh, well, he got hit by Luke. Yeah, okay. Every, you know, uh, Muhammad Ali went down. Joe Frazier went down. Okay. Duran went down. Leonard went down. Hearns went down. Foreman went there, you name it. Every fighter goes down once. It's like a motorcycle rider. You can be assured if you ride a motorcycle, you're going to go down sooner or later. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the fact of the matter is, are you going to get back up on your feet? And that's what he did. And he turned around and knocked the guy out. So other than that, Ryan has pretty much been unscathed in this sport, which is not easy to do. So um, I believe in his defensive abilities and his offensive qualities and uh, I just th- those type of thoughts those negative thoughts haven't crossed my mind at all I know what to do when we when I've had fighters other fighters that have been in trouble and mm-hmm. you know you 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 have to size that up rather quickly and make a determination on whether you want to pull the plug on it or you want to keep going forward and you know, if you believe in your guy's conditioning and you see that he responds well, then you go forward. And then ultimately, you've got a ringside doctor and the referee that they're more than qualified uh, in 99% of the cases to uh, assess what's going on in the ring and do what's best for the fighter. So between the three parties here, I think we'll make the right decision if that were to ever come about, but uh, that's not the way I'm looking at it. Good. Um, I know that uh, we, you know, fashion was a very big part of both uh, Tank and Ryan. I know that you, I know the, the whole corner will be fitted in a Miri. Did you know that? That one? Uh, the, your whole corner, uh, Ryan's gear is going to be a Miri, the designer. Your guys' stuff uh, is going to be a Miri. So I don't know your, if you're going to be able to wear your yeah, denim outfit. I, you, know, <laughs> you know, listen. I, Unless a Miri makes a custom I, I, denim outfit for I have you. the first right of refusal. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. Oh. We'll, we'll see what they came up with. And, um, I can't wait. And then we'll take it from there. But I, I, I already have something prepared. Oh. My, Sorry, uh, Mary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, oh, it's Joe Goose and Clashing. Okay, yeah. real fast. Um, I know that you and I are going to be working together very shortly. I am part of the Team Combat League broadcasting team. I did not know that. Yes, well, we, you be, you've been quite busy because yeah. you are busy with Ryan Garcia. Yeah. So I don't know when you will be joining us in Mohegan Sun, but we've been working it. Fantastic fights. Uh, when it was approached to you, what did you think about the, the concept of a team boxing league? Look, I, I, you may not know this, but um, over a dozen years ago, I did team... Um, I don't want to say combat, but but team competition. Okay. It was the um, uh, what was it called? It was the uh, oh yeah, it was um, it was the team competition, and it was on Fox. Now I don't know why it escapes me right now. Um, but what did you think? What do you think of the contest? Well, I know, but I, I, I had done a little bit of that it, and before, and I really liked the team competition mm-hmm. is what I was trying to get to. Um, the World Series of... World Series of... Oh, no, not World Boxing Series. No, that's in UK. Yeah. We'll figure it out. I'll put it, okay. in, the, I'll put it in the lower thirds. I'll Google it. I'll, I'll okay. look it up. Anyway, so I, I had done that with Alan Massengale was the blow-by-blow, blow, and I was the color. Mm-hmm. It was called the World Series of Boxing. Oh, okay, there you go. And, and it was team competition, um, and it was the L.A. Matadors mm-hmm. was the team from L.A., and they fought competition from all over the world. It was unbelievable. They were amateurs that fought under the pro rules. They used eight out, you know, they used pro yeah. gloves and uh, no headgear. Oh, yeah. And they fought under the professional rules. And 
there were teams from, like I said, all over the world, and I loved that. I loved that whole idea of team competition. And so I, now this is a little bit different format. This is one. So it's one. One so three. One three minute round. One three minute round. One three minute rounds. Mm -hmm. There's 24 rounds, so um, there's different divisions, and every fighter gets to fight three rounds unless they get knocked out. Um, it's right. fast action. The um, it's quick. You don't have time to have a feel out round. Right. You have to get in there and just get to it, and you have to score points because it's a team league. Mm -hmm. And so you want to score the best team, uh, score the best points for your team. That's right. And I don't want to be the one to take the deficit. So right. I love this concept, but um, I know I've, I've taken up a lot of your time, but I can't so, wait to you for you to get on the, t the team with us. Same here. I, look, right, I, 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 I know I missed the first two shows. Oh, they're fun. A and I'm really looking forward to it. I love the, I love the concept. And I know Polly's uh, yeah, as as well out there, and then um, uh, Polly, Polly Malinaji, Amir Tyson, Mike Tyson's son, right. and Ray Flores. We're all on the call. And Ray Flores, of yeah. course, yeah, and uh, yeah. I mean, I can't wait to sit on the call with you to talk boxing because it is, uh, you know, just to sit with these professionals, and you know, because I, I, my next step is going to color commentary, and that's what I've been doing. I uh, listen. I I listen to you guys, and you guys have been doing a great job, a really good job, and. Uh, I hope I don't ruin it when no. I when I show up. You guys are gonna be fine. All right. Well, uh, lastly, one last thing: mm -hmm. Haney versus Loma. Who wins? Oh, sorry. The no. I don't know. I just got dazed. Which fight? Haney versus oh. Loma. Yeah, I, I have to tell you, I heard they're fighting. I've been on lockdown pretty much with Ryan. And as a boxing fan, from what you know, what do you think? Well, I mean, look, they're both incredible boxers they're skilled guys um haney's the younger guy here mm -hmm. and he's on a roll right now lomo's had you know he's 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 had a couple of bumps in the road in the last couple of years but again he's so exceptional that if if he does it right he's almost impossible to beat i think it's going to be one of the great chess matches of all time Absolutely. you know because you've got two very calculating guys they're just not going to run in and throw punches and they're not going to leave themselves open for you know ridiculous punches they're they're quite calculating and they're quite efficient in their defense and offense so that's a tough one to call i mean you know i i, I wouldn't say it would be far-fetched to call that a, a pick em fight yeah I, I agree it's to see who's going to get the queen first that's going to be an interesting one but again joe goosen thank you so much i'm so happy to have uh, done this and um, I'm looking forward to when is the next show? Next show is next week so depending on if you're available uh, no 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 I'm going to be I'm going to be available I'm right back in the gym Monday I've got other okay. fighters that are we have, a, we have a fight Thursday in Mohegan Sun so I will see you I'm, um, I'm going to get in and out and um, of the gym to go yeah, do the show and come on back yeah all right. Well, we are here for a historical fight. Uh, Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia. It all th this allegedly the bets are real. They put that they bet their purse. Allegedly, it's real. <laughs> you better hope you get your percentage split. <laughs> all right, Joe Goosen, thank you. Again, I'm Cynthia Conde for Best Women's Boxing Show, period, <laughs> on the road. Joe Goosen, guys. See you guys at the fights. Bye, guys.